All right, so for this problem, we're looking to see where our function is increasing and decreasing first. Then we'll use that information to go find the maximum and minimum values. So increasing as decreasing is determined by the derivative function. So the first thing we want to do here is we want to figure out what is the, our actual derivative function. And there we should end up finding that it's 4x cubed minus 12x squared. Now, it changes, our graph will change from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing when the derivative equals zero. So I'm going to take that derivative function and I'm going to set it equal to zero. And then I'm going to solve that equation for x. In this case, then, the very first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to factor out a 4 from both of those terms and an x squared out of both of those terms. If I do that, that then leaves me with x minus 3 inside the parentheses. Based off of that information, then, I can see that x could equal 0 or positive 3. So then those mark the two points where it's changing from increasing to decreasing or from decreasing to increasing. Those are the changes of my intervals then. And so I'm going to have one interval that goes from negative infinity up to 0. Then another one goes from 0 up to 3. And then from 3 up to a positive infinity. All right, now for each of those three intervals, we need to know whether it's increasing or whether it's decreasing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a point from within each one and we're going to test it. So in this first interval, I'm going to grab the point negative 1, and I'm going to plug that negative 1 into the derivative. Yep. Always make sure you're thinking that part through. Are you plugging it into the original, the derivative, the second derivative, or what? In this case, it's the derivative because we're looking to see is the graph increasing or decreasing. In other words, is the slope positive or negative? All right, so when I take negative 1 and plug it into that derivative equation, it gives me negative 16. Now, what I really care about there is just the fact that it's negative because that then tells me that over this interval, it is decreasing. All right, I'm now going to check another one. In this case, I'm going to choose 1 just because that seems like a nice, easy number to plug in at that interval. And if I plug 1 into my derivative equation here, that ends up giving me negative 8. And therefore, it is decreasing. Notice it was decreasing at both of those intervals. Yes, that can happen. What that tells me is that my graph was decreasing, it leveled out, and then it went to decreasing again. All right, and then for the final interval, uh, does it level out again and continue decreasing, or does it turn back and start increasing? The way we find this out, of course, is by taking a number from within that interval and plugging it into my derivative function. I'm going to choose 4 to plug in because it's the next easiest number, I think. That gives me 64, which is positive. Therefore, on that interval, my graph is increasing. All right, now we head into the second set of questions on this one. Find the local maximum and minimum values. Remember that a maximum value occurs when it changes from increasing to decreasing. And so I'm looking at my intervals up here that I wrote earlier, since I already have them at hand, this seems like the best way to do this. And I'm looking for a place where it changes from increasing to decreasing. I don't see any places where it changes from increasing to decreasing, which says that this does not have a local maximum. But I do see a location where it changes from decreasing to increasing. That happens at three. And so if it changes from decreasing to increasing, that is, a local minimum. And so that would happen there at x equals 3.